greeted by uh, our illustrious guest, Jeff Smith, and my co-host, Greg Acosta, editor of Engine Labs. How's it going, Greg? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, man. Good. I'm excited for today. Um, yeah. We had Jeff agree to come on the show. I'm really excited about it, man. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and we always have awesome conversations. So I'm looking forward to getting into the interview. Um yeah, yeah, no, we've, so, we've been talking already, and uh, <laughs> it's going to be a good show. Let's just say that. Yeah, man. Um, and, uh, you know, for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, we're going to be speaking with Jeff's, um, Jeff Disted. He is uh, he's known uh, throughout the industry, doing a lot of talent work, on-screen stuff. Um, currently, he, uh, he hosts um, the Good Guys Autocross, and, among other things. Uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and bring him on. All righty. Hey Jeff, guys. how are you, man? Never better. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Did you call me Jeff Smith? I did. I did. I had some engine, <laughs> some engine stuff on my mind, man. I apologize. I Jeff this did. I love this. It. Did. At least, at least you're not being insulted. I mean, if yeah, somebody's no, that, gonna uh, call me a wrong name and calls yeah. me Jeff Smith, I'm gonna take it. Every yeah, that's time. a that's a compliment for sure. Every time. Um, Every time. <laughs> look at you, you look but, like uh, Aquaman, buddy. Yeah, man. I, I'm just trying to stay fit like him during uh, during all this craziness, but uh, it's tough. You know, How are you staying fit? What are you stuff. doing? What are you doing crunches, uh, just push ups you... and push -ups. no, just push ups, pull ups. You know, I got a pull up bar in my room and uh, just uh, some push ups. That's about it. Some man. 12 ounce curls, you know. That's all yeah, I yeah, do. Exactly. 12 ounce curls. Yep. <laughs> Vitamin T. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on, man. I I I I, I feel like I did you a disservice with uh, not only um, getting your name wrong on on your <laughs> intro, but also uh, not being able to quote like the vast amount of work that you do. Uh, can you fill our viewers in on um, your most notable uh, accolades? You got it. My, and, but, and we're close enough friends that I figure I could give you heck of, I could give you a hard time about that. It's you forgetting my name. I love it. It makes me laugh. I'm going to hold it over your head the rest of your life. Um, we know each other through, uh, you know, power auto media. I do some, some stuff for you guys at SEMA. I'm a hired gun. Come out there and interview people for power auto media at SEMA. Um, but also I'm the host of the Hot Rod Power Tour, uh, one of the idiots up on stage with uh, a good friend of mine. Um, I'm the, one of the mouths of uh, the Good Guys Autocross. So if you're the Good Guys show, if you're a registered participant, if your car's got a name tag or a, a number tag on it, you can come out and autocross. I don't know if you knew that. So it's super cool. And that's one of the things I love that when Vinny's around, he'll always stop by the autocross. We'll get him in there. You just got to sign a waiver. You're all set. Come out, come around and beat the heck out of your car. It's, it's super fun. Uh, one of my friends, Tim Strange. Uh, he's a member of the Hot Rod Hall of Fame. He's a part of the uh, the Good Guys Act as well. We do a couple of shows together. Uh, I used to do the Car Craft Summer Nationals that, when that was around. Um, I do the C10 Nationals. That'll be in, I think, May 29th and 30th at the Texas Motor Speedway. So I, I get around a little bit. So Yeah, man. You are constantly working. I was so pleased uh, that you had just a, a little bit of downtime to come on the show. I'm, I'm so happy to have you here, man. Um, <laughs> But uh, thanks, I'm honored you know, to be here. Yeah, now I got a lot of downtime, so uh, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Well, you know, um, it, it seems that you know that seems to be like par for the course for everyone right now. So uh, if we can get people's minds off of some craziness that's going on, all the better, man. And we could talk about some car stuff, you know. The car stuff. So I don't know how many years ago it was, but uh, I was at the in the parking garage at the hotel at SEMA. I don't know what day it was, but uh, I, I got it all. I, that's my car right there. I got an old 55 wagon. So I drive yeah. 55. It's, it's a 210 wagon. It's not a Nomad. Uh, but I parked it all the way down at the end in this parking garage. And then uh, we'd been hanging out all week long, Vinny and I. And then one day it's like, you got you know, he's got an old car. What kind of car? And it was the Monte Carlo Snake Eyes. That's like, right. Wait, yeah. the, the black Monte Carlo that's parked all the way in at the by the state. Yeah, there's, a, there's some sort of fifth, there's station wagon. That's me. It's like, no way. So <laughs> we became fast friends because he's got the Snake Eyes Monty and I got the 55. So, yeah, that was fun. That's right, man. That was a good time. Um, and I oh. want to get I want to get all into your 55. I know that's been a big project that you've been working on um, for a long time now. But yeah. uh, before we get into that, I, uh, I kind of wanted to start at the beginning for Jeff, right? Um, right. You've had a... Uh, um, a uh, a career that spans you know um, quite a bit of time and uh, and um, I'm old yeah I, I was trying to say I'm that, old, you're right that's not what I'm saying Jeff I'm not I'm trying to dance no, you're young you're handsome <laughs> rub it in I'm old you have to speak up I'm a little deaf huh no man I'm trying to say Ray, that uh, look at this. you have this, a this. oh dear oh look at see it you can see it right there that's experience man a vast hey, amount of experience you. exactly yeah. experience 
And uh, so I guess, can you fill our, our viewers in on how you kind of got started in, in all of this? How'd you end up where you're at now? Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, Give us the cliff all, notes. You don't have to. Yeah. It started, uh, I was back in, I grew up in Colorado Springs. And my parents, I don't know why I like cars. Uh, my answer is um, we, we had a VW Super Beetle, 71 VW Super Beetle. That It ended up being my first car. But uh, when I was a kid, there's a, 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 play, a seat in the back, back, back. And I would always love riding back there. And one day we were driving through the Garden of the Gods. And all of a sudden coming the other way was this Corvette parade. And it something about all those, the plastic fantastic just driving by. And it was like Jim Morrison into the Indian spirit going in. But those Corvettes, <laughs> I don't know what that, what it was. But uh, I remember for my birthday or Christmas that year, that, that year I asked for a Hot Rod magazine um, as a birthday. So I had a subscription to Hot Rod magazine since I was in the fourth grade. Um, and then... As silly as it is, I grew up in the 80s. I like the hair bands and the metal chicks and the, uh, anyways, Hot for Teacher. I, I always like game shows too. And at the very end of the Hot for Teacher video, David Lee Roth says he's going to be America's favorite TV game show host. And I was like, hey, I'm going to steal. I'm going to use that line. So I, I, I wanted to be a game show host. So I, you can't do that in Colorado. So I moved out to LA and uh, I've worked on the, I've worked at the Playboy Mansion. I worked on the Price is Right uh, with Bob Barker and Drew Carey. Um, yeah, and uh, but I've always liked cars, so uh, uh, got into cars and hosting some shows like the Hot Rod Power Tour. I used to be uh, one of the idiots up on stage for uh, if you were at the L.A. or or not a car show, but auto show, you know, the L.A. or Detroit or New York yeah. auto show. Um, they wouldn't let me uh, on the Corvette or the Camaro, which is kind of weird because I was the only one on the team who knew how a limited slip differential worked or a internal combustion engine. Uh, but they had me on the trucks because I apparently I look like I uh, I work hard and I play harder. So I was able to <laughs> tell you all about the new Chevy Silverado for a few years at all the auto shows. Um, so uh, that was good. And, and the funny thing, how that transitioned is uh, I went from there. And then I remember my first year on the power tour. I'm the go ahead guy. So my co-host Clarence, he would go along for the day. I would always go ahead. So I'm there early in the morning and I'm there for setup uh, and. If I've got nothing to, I didn't know what to do. They didn't have any script. It's just, they give you a microphone. It's like, here you go, kid. And just push <laughs> you out there. So it's like, oh, okay. But every time that uh, the Chevy, Chevy Performance is the title sponsor of the Power Tour. And every, whenever they, and they have all these, these cars. And my, my very first year, they had, uh, so I went to SEMA. And at SEMA, they, they had built a Jimmy, it's a 1971 Camaro. And it's like this gray titanium cover and had the brand new, uh, Gen 5 with the LT1 engine in it, the direct injected one, and a basically the brand new Z06 Corvette suspension in it. And I saw that at SEMA, but you can't touch anything at SEMA because they're all show cars and they're pretty. On the Power Tour, they were driving it. That's so, awesome. oh, so I ended up talking my way into it. And I get this at the, ver the very last day, I'm at the hotel. We're checking out of our hotel rooms. John comes up next and he's like, Hey, kid, you want to ride in it? This is your chance. So, uh, so I, my handlers, Jenny and Michelle, is like, hey guys, and we don't care where you, we just, just as long as you're there on time, Jeff. So I got a ride in the damn thing, and it was just, anyways, it's the most wonderful time of the year. And uh, we, I get to the stage, and I end up knowing, uh, I got a very nice compliments from the Chevy Performance guys that they never had anybody. And when, when the truck came in, I knew the horsepower, I knew the engine, I knew the engine options, I knew the Camaro, I know all the new stuff, I know a little bit about the old stuff. So it was. Uh, it uh, it kind of worked out, so it was a nice uh, it was a nice compliment, and I don't know where I was going with yeah. this, but <laughs> uh, well, you were just giving us some background on uh, some of the experiences you've had, and I can only imagine that you have a countless amount of stories, and we're going to dive into <laughs> some of those here in our next segment um, called oh, geez, Explain We got that. segments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look so at you. you're prepared. <laughs> Yeah, man, we did we do some homework. You yeah, know, it's not all so, it's geez. not all drinking beer and writing over here, but uh, there is some of that. <laughs> um, all right, but all yeah, right. so. Um, Next segment's called Explain That Pick. Um, so look, don't be too freaked out. We don't have any of you from the Playboy Mansion, but okay, uh, we do have some <laughs> some interesting <laughs> picks um, that we took from your social media. And um, in order to give our, our viewers uh, a little bit of a background on Jeff, we'll, okay. we'll shoot you some of these photos. And then if you wouldn't mind just giving us some uh, some backstory on what that how that photo was <laughs> taken. Yeah, okay. do it. Uh, a deeper dive. Sure. What the heck do I have on social media? Oh, geez. 
Okay. All right, Greg, you ready? So here's oh. picture number one. Young Jeff uh, being anointed by Mr. Barker himself. What's going on here? That's exactly what it was. So uh, that was Bob Barker. That was our 35th year in The Price is Right. I was the production coordinator. And between his 35 years there and 15 years on Truth or Consequences, he had been in the industry on the air every day for 50 years. So that was when he was retiring. And as it turns out, I had auditioned for and I got uh, I landed the job of hosting my own game shows on GSN. And uh, in Barker's hand right there is one of the three original microphones from 1972 when the show started. And uh, I believe either Barker or the or CBS or, or our uh, executive producer, Roger Dopkowitz, um, one of those three had that microphone in a bag. And what they were going to do at the very last day of the show, they were going to auction it off on eBay. And uh, how that came about was Roger came up to me and uh, Jeff, I know you always. Very, this was right when digital cameras were first kind of coming out after the Mavicas, but the little cameras, not the iPhones like everybody has. They weren't there yet. So I always had a digital camera because I knew that when working on the prices right every day is history. And to me, that's the idiot that I am. I'm sentimental. Anyways, uh, the producer asked me, Jeff, you got your camera. Would you mind taking some pictures of Barker and the microphones? I, I, I would be honored to, but I've got a request. So <laughs> I talked to Roger and Rogers talked to Barker. And so Barker asked me about it. And, and, I, and uh, in front of uh, Roger and then Mira and Carol, the hair and makeup ladies, uh, I showed him the picture. He said, you can use it wherever you want. And they all said, we heard it, Jeff. So you've got it. You've got it on record. You can use the picture wherever you want. So he was anointing me because I got my own game show. I got the blessing from the longest, the ma the world's greatest master of ceremonies. Um, he's the one who taught me that uh, you're not the star of the show. You make the contestant the star of the show. All you are is a vehicle, just a cog in a wheel in the machine to get from point A to point B. And if you make the contestant the star, then anyways, that's that's Parker. Yeah, that was he's anointing me or he's, yeah, he's a pope at daytime. Yeah, man, that's awesome. What a cool <laughs> inside dive and behind this photo. I would have never known. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah, that's awesome. It. That's funny. Cool. Um, okay, rolling light right along. Uh, yeah, I was on the price photo of right for a few years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's Jeff, the, I know, like that, myself, you are an adrenaline junkie. Can you give us a deeper dive into this one right here? So I like water skiing. Uh, ever since I was a kid, my buddy, I met this guy, and we've been friends. My best friend in, in the in the world, Joey Rooney, and uh, Joey, um, he owns a place down in Long Beach called the Crooked Duck, and uh, his old place was up in West LA. We started talking about water skiing, and uh, he invited me to come. Like, who is this guy inviting me to come water skiing? And I went with him the next Monday. I think it was. We go Mondays or Tuesdays. Actually, during the Price is Right, we went on Fridays. Because we taped, uh, uh, we did uh, two shows on Monday, two, two shows on Monday, one show Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday was non-taping. So if you got everything done, we water skied. We had three-day weekends. It wasn't so bad. So that's that's me behind a, uh, I think that's the old commander. I'm not sure if that, maybe the, the Mastercraft. But the, yeah, we, we like seeing that's at Lake Elsinore. And, um, oh, geez. cool. Yeah, yeah you're right. Tells, and that used, exactly. And that used to be uh, the channel. Uh, you know where they, if you, where my spray is, that's the uh, the airstrip for where they go parachuting, where they take the people up to jump out of the planes. But yeah, there yeah, used to definitely. be, you had to pay like 40 bucks and have a life insurance policy and all this stuff. But you could rent out the channel back there. And it's like, we were the only ones who ever did it. So we kind of owned the, it was pretty cool. Dude, yeah, that's I like awesome. <laughs> I know you've, yeah. you've invited me a couple of times. I feel bad I haven't taken you up on it. Um, but I, I imagine it takes a considerable amount of skill. And you're, you're into like snow sports too, right? So you... Have some experience on skis. I used to be a snow skier, but now it's too cold and da da da. da I have excuses, but my nieces and nephew they are they're they're actually ranked nationally um, for snow skiing. They those little those I little know, kids kid, rip. You're always posting videos of them, and I'm like, holy cow, these kids are just like just I, flinging themselves off these jumps, and yeah. they're awesome, man. That's awesome. I'm a proud uncle. I don't have any kids. I'm not married, so I I'm a proud proud uncle Jeff. Same here, man. I, I like being the cool uncle, so yeah, right. it works out for me. <laughs> That's my golden life, and now I get to hear things. Oh, for Christmas, I got this shirt, coolest freaking uncle ever. It's like... <laughs> it's, yeah. Right in the heartstrings, gotcha. Yeah, 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 yeah. My favorite shirt, yeah. Very cool. 
All right. Um, what other pictures can we roll? You got? Yeah, let's Back. see. Uh, yeah. My buddy Steve got that. Usually I wear a helmet. Um, I can't <laughs> believe that's the first thing I said. You know you're old when. Anyway, when I was a kid, I, I grew up watching all, I, the Skateboarder magazine, and Tony Alva was my hero skateboarding and then you got the dog town and z boys and i i would skateboard back and forth to the gym but i had never done a snake run or a or a bowl or or, or anything like that and then uh you ever been to venice beach oh yeah. yeah yeah have you seen the venice beach skate park oh yeah it's a fantastic skate park oh do you skate yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. i uh, i grew up skateboarding i mean that's uh okay when, when this uh, when this pandemic is over with, we got to go to the Venice Beach skate park because it is. I rode my bike through there after it was done, and was just my mind was blown, and I so I started going out there early in the mornings because nobody needs to see me. And initially, I didn't have any pads until I fell a bunch of times, and it's like if I got to work, man, I got I so I pad up every all my entire body. I'm wrapped up like a mummy. And, so uh, that's um, the big bowl at Venice, and it is oh my god, it is so fun. Have you ever uh, taken a bad spill skateboarding? Have you ever um, oh. knock on wood? Oh, I the first, I used to not wear a helmet because oh, you know I can I can get at it da, 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 and I did something in the snake run and I used to, I wore a bandana because it you're just rolling around on a set of wheels and a board but it's actually a good exercise and I I sweat um, so I took off my bandana and there was blood all over the back of my bandana and so oh I man oh yeah I went I I wear my helmet every time now and it's like that's the only time I didn't because or if it's for a picture and they don't want one, I know what to. I know a line that I can take where I'm not gonna. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, cement hurts, man. It's yeah, it cracked does. my ribs. I uh, show. Oh my god, yeah, it's it's. But I don't it's know, fun. man. Water's just as bad. Do you surf? I very poorly. I've not, I don't really yeah. get up. Yeah, I flounder about. Same. <laughs> yeah, right. It's nice to go out there and sit though. Oh, but, it's, it's um, the best, right? Yeah. But, oh, Sean um, wants to know more about the Playboy Man. I'll tell you all about the Playboy Mansion later. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure everybody wants to know that. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures, but Greg, we might have that something before, interesting. Yeah, before the, look at where, oh, that's got to be. <laughs> okay, so a friend of mine from high school, I get a phone call one day, a friend of mine from high school, Carrie, uh, she's an agent in Kansas City. And her daughter is beautiful and talented and wants to be ripped. Da, 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 da. So she's asked me some questions, but they're looking for a host for a, it was this cruise ship thing, the Global Stars Network. We're kind of like the American Idol on the cruise ship they had. People would uh, uh, pay to come on and then we would bring on, or they would bring on uh, uh, casting directors and talent agents and talent managers. And they, these, uh, the, the talent would, uh, they would do, they would sing, dance, um, uh, walking up and down the runway as a model, uh, dialogues, monologues, uh, uh, stand-up comedy, all that stuff, all with the, the, the goal of trying to get represented by one of these agencies or getting picked mm -hmm. up by a casting director and that sort of thing. So we, we would go on these cruises, and I think this was in, I don't even know, but it was with Carrie Lynn and Mike, and I know that's a Cuban cigar because we're not in the United States, <laughs> and we're there. Some, I, I bet you they were chopping up, they were putting some sort of rum or some sort of alcohol because so get this, my, my buddy Carrie Lynn, uh, she's a beautiful friend from high school, and she marries this this well, this air this guy. From, I grew up in Colorado Springs, Air Force Academy, and uh, he's now I think the uh, he's almost a general, uh, but he flies A tens, the Thunderbolts, the sixty yeah. millimeter. Yeah. He, yeah, he's a full on warrior, three hundred third fighter squadron. Anyways, we we like day drinking together, so we were out there in some. Uh, yeah, some other country day drinking and uh, that's awesome. Property dude. is Chevrolet. I'm still representing. <laughs> I know you're repping right there. No, I right? was expecting like, oh yeah, you know, I was um, uh, playing uh, Indiana Jones' uh, younger brother in <laughs> right? um, or something. But yeah, that's awesome, dude. That's really cool. Oh, that's um, funny. I haven't seen so is that's that on my drink? social media. That's funny. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, so. Jeff, drinking rum out of a coconut. I like it. What do we got next, Greg? Oh, I love it. That so uh, so I'm still on my skateboard pads. The uh, and my buddy Steve took this shot. If basically where my ass is, uh, <laughs> ten feet away from that is the Venice Beach skate park, and right. we always get there in the morning because nobody needs to see us skate. We don't need to. Uh, we get in there, we get out, uh, get some runs in, and 
every so often, I don't know what the rhyme or reason was, but there's a guy who comes out there and he's, he drives one of those little Honda or, or those little, it's a quad, uh, the little, the little quad runners. Oh but yeah. Behind it. Yeah. Behind it. He's got this little great deal. This, whatever the thing is. And he does this whole, it's like a Zen garden pattern of it. And it was, and you can see in the, in the shot, there were already three. It, it amazes us always how it almost immediately after he gets done doing this at six or seven in the morning, pardon me, some asshole has got to come in and walk all the way through and like, guys, can't you see it? They just got done doing it. Let it stay Zen and pretty for a little bit for the love of God. And, <laughs> anyway, my buddy Steve uh, convinced me to go out there and pretend like I was doing the little making the lines oh, of the Zen I Garden. Guess. So that's I, uh, I haven't seen that one either. That's a cool shot. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's cool. Oh, I'm funny. so glad that we asked you about it. That's awesome. I thought you were just into making crop circles or something. You like exactly. to freak yeah, out. That's what I do in my in my downtime uh, when I'm not here under quarantine. I uh, I like to make crop circles and uh, dance in the rain. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What All are the right. pictures you got? What they? Yeah. Oh dear! God. This one you Look have you have to explain this one, dude. This one out of all of them, I, I need a backstory. And that's it. That's on social media. Where'd you guys find this? This is on your Facebook. On Facebook, holy sh! Wow. Um, so I, uh, I'm not an actor. I, I'm a host, but I did some extra work back in the day. That's a there was a TV show called Alien Nation, and it took uh, I think that was about three. That's hours. where I recognize that from, Jeff. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was like scary familiar. Alienation. That's what yeah. it is. Three hours in makeup uh, to begin the day. And then uh, I think it was an hour and a half getting it all taken off. Um, oh, my God. In downtown LA. Oh, my God. I hold oh, this. I so that was back. I had a, my first hot rod was a 69 Corvette. And um, it was my daily driver for uh, over 10 years. It was the only car I had out here in LA. So my call time was in downtown LA and I don't know if it was three in the morning. It was super early. And it, this was back before the cell phones and, and everything. I had a Thomas guy that was that thick and I didn't know my head from my ass. And I went to, I don't know what exit in downtown LA and I'm lost and it's three 30 in the morning, pitch black out. I'm driving through Skid Row. Uh, uh, pardon me, sir. Can you tell me how to get to a, <laughs> Say, man, you better watch it. It's like, oh, geez, I, uh, convertible <laughs> that stingray. It's like it was just not the the smartest thing to do. And but yeah, uh, but yeah, Alien Nation. That's uh, so, I haven't seen that in a long time. And you found that on my Facebook. Yeah, yeah, we did a deep dive it? and we found it. Yeah, so Alien Nation, um, three hours in pre, and then an hour and a half in post. Uh, how many people were they doing? Like, how many how many people had that makeup on? Good lord, I can only. Been- not, I don't think 20, but I know there was a bunch of them. And then there were the stars who had their own uh, special marks or their own. Yeah. And I didn't, I never watched the show. I didn't know anything about it. It was, it was uh, that day was like my rent. Yeah. Yeah. I made, awesome. It was amazing for yeah. a bunch of Klingons running around. What, right? how, yeah. what, what was the process like? Did they have to like put a cap on you and then yep. like. The cap what, like, and then uh, they, they touched up all day long. I couldn't use earphones, earbuds. Uh, not that we had any, but they, they covered up your, your ears. So it was, you didn't hear that well. They had to yell at you. Um, and then yeah, your <laughs> head started to, you couldn't hit your head. They put the, I think they put a pantyhose over your head or whatever the skull cap. Yeah, man, you got a, a beautiful, thick, full head of hair. And I, and back then it was like super long too, like kind of like mine. Yeah, so <laughs> so yeah, uh, was, I can, uh, they I just, had to like stuff it under there, right? I just, yeah, I just remember it was a long process sitting in the chair. That's crazy. Hey, yeah. so you touched on your car that you had at that time. I think our next photo might have something yeah. to do with that. Yeah, that's that's we didn't plan this. This is just dumb luck on our part. I mean, we really did plan it because we're that oh, good. Wow. And look at my we leg. Knew. Holy shit. Look at you. <laughs> so and what's going on here? Plates. Okay, yeah. So I had a uh, I moved to LA and my car got stolen. So car got stolen, and then when the car got stolen, I figured, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I said, I get a new car, I get a motorcycle. So I got this little chopper, a little Suzuki intruder chopper, and I ended up getting hit on it. And if you can see my leg is there, my leg is a bandage on it. I've had nine, nine surgeries, three plates, 35 screws, oh, there's a man. double compound fracture. I got totally messed up on the motorcycle. So after the motorcycle, uh, my parents came out to visit, and I was talking to my mom about, I, uh, uh, okay, uh, so what kind of vehicle you're going to get? So talking to my mom, I'm thinking about getting a Chevelle. And after telling her all about this Chevelle, she's like, I, I've never heard of you talk about a Chevelle before. 
Um, you've always told me you wanted a Corvette and you don't have a wife, you don't have any kids, you don't have a mortgage. Um, if you want a, an old Corvette like you've always wanted, now is probably a good time for you to get one. What? Who, th th this is my mom, my voice of reason telling me that I should get a Corvette. So what did I do? I hired a company. I was still bedridden at the time, but I hired a company and I found this uh, in, uh, I think, New Canaan, Connecticut. And uh, it was my first hot rod, 1969 Corvette, uh, a 350 uh, M20 transmission. And I put a gold strand suspension on it and drove. I, it was my daily driver for a long time. And that was, uh, it's my car. So I'm leaning on it. Otherwise, it's like I usually don't lean on uh, on cars in pictures. I, I don't think it looks very cool, but uh, that's my car, and uh, so I had at least have the right to lean on it. And uh, <laughs> that's uh, the old Monaco Orange '69. And, and uh, when I was getting ready to sell it, it, it was my driver for years, and then it just sat in the garage because it doesn't have room for anything. It barely fit my skateboard. It won't fit my water ski. It doesn't fit anything. But it's, it was just, I love that damn car. So, so I got a phone. How'd you land on that one? How, um, the convertible, like the, the color, the all of it. It's a you got to get a red Corvette, and that was actually Monaco orange, a little faded orange, so it looked red. But I, I just I've always loved the Coke bottle styling. '68 was the first year of that body style, and '68s were always plagued with a lot of problems here and there. The '68 had 327, '69, however, that was the first year of the 350 and the Corvette. Second year of the body style, so a lot of the bugs I thought were worked out of it. Um, it doesn't have the push button on the door handle. I just thought it was a little bit more refined. I liked the 69 better. Uh, I didn't want AC. I didn't want power windows, no power doors, no power steering, just a hot rod, little small block uh, to boogie me down the road. Um, Dude, I, it sounds like you were living the life, man. You, you wreck I, your motorcycle, get a new Corvette. You're right. you know, yeah. living in LA, working. And that That's was, awesome. That was also a litmus test. I remember if I would go out on a date with a girl, and there was a couple of them. Two that I remember specifically, I picked them up in the car. Oh, it's a convertible. Would you mind putting the top up because you're going to mess up my hair? It's like, all right, get out. <laughs> get out. What do you mean? It's like, uh, this isn't going to work out. I mean, right from the get-go. Uh, so, adios. Yeah, man. So, so what happened to the vet? Uh, when I got ready to sell it, I got a phone call from my brother. And they said, I, you know, I, heard, I hear you're selling the, the red car. And I say, yeah, well, I want it. I don't want it to pick up, come between. It's like, hey, it's a car. It won't come between us. So now it's in my in my brother's garage in, uh, in Denver. So it's, That's it's, awesome. It, so it's you... still in the family. I love it. Yeah, you still get to see it. That's awesome. And my little my my six-year-old nephew now, which back when he was three, two, three or four years old, what's your favorite car? A Corvette. So he, that's his favorite <laughs> car now. He loves the Corvette. That's awesome, man. I'm yeah, so glad so it's I... still in your family. Me too. Hey, Greg, do we have any more photos? Oh, we do. We do. Oh, that cool. was a job I had. The uh, uh, yeah, people it was, yeah, I, I had heard from a Sahar, a friend of mine on the Chevrolet team, told me I always look like 007. Yeah, man. So um, I got hired in Vegas for the, the, I don't even know what the name of the show was. Some sort of, some sort of a, a remote cloud, cloud-based uh, server technology show. And I was, uh, yeah, I was 007, and there was, I think, five or six Bond girls that were around me all day long. So it, it wasn't such a bad gig, Vinny. Uh, except yeah, I, I, had to wear, I, I had to wear pointy, uncomfortable pointy shoes and a tie. But I always say, if you want me to wear sh those shoes and a tie, you got to pay me. So it wasn't so bad. <laughs> Dude, uh, I imagine, like, if someone were to tell me um, any of my friends were actually, like, a, a secret agent, and they told me... <laughs> That Jeff Thiston was a secret agent. I think I would be least surprised out of out of everyone I know. I'd be like, oh, you're yeah, funny. I, I, I could see that. Now yeah, I have funny. a question, and it, it bears actual asking. You, you said there are Bond girls all around you. Are you talking about like legit real Bond girls? No. Or, okay. No, the, I'm just. It, it was that uh, they get. I don't know where they got them from, but I know it's from some some sort of agency. One of those agencies in Vegas that has got. You know, have you seen those Instagram golf girls? <laughs> oh, yeah, boot <laughs> like Golf caddies, it's like those kind of girls. And it's like, they're yeah. And they're just trying to get leads for the company. And I, uh, I was the guy who would do a presentation whenever they wanted me to and try to bring in the people. And then the girls would hey. go over them with the iPad. And yeah, so they were in there. Jeff, if, so if a client wants to hire you, right? And they say, hey, we want, to do, we want you to do an event like this and we want you to host. Um, 
do uh, do they always supply your wardrobe, or can you say like, oh, well, I have a tuxedo. You guys need me to wear a tuxedo. How does that work? You ninety percent of the time they'll supply it for me. In this instance, uh, that was part of the audition. I, I had to. You have to have your own wardrobe, and I got a black jacket and black pants. It's not a suit, not matching, but it's just black and black. And then then the the old white shirt and black shoes. So I I got those those shoes that you have to pay me to wear because they're so uncomfortable. That's why I, I admire my brother so much. He has to wear those damn things every day in his uh, in his office. I couldn't do it, man. I could wear combat boots, but not pointy shoes. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, it's like a hot rod. I got the hot rod staff shirt. Uh, Power Auto Media. I got the PAM shirt. Um, can any, any, yeah, any hired guns usually, um, uh, unless they want a flannel or something, I have a very limited wardrobe. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's cool, man. Do yeah. we have any more photos, Greg? Yeah. Just, just to let you know, there are two more. Okay. Okay. And, and then, and then, and then we'll let you off. All right, it's all yeah. good. This is fun. We'll st- yeah. We'll stop grilling you. It's like through it's a uh, walk down memory lane. Holy shit. Oh, and look, I'm wearing the same jacket. It's probably not even yeah, man, it looks good. laid back. So I got, uh, uh, a phone call some years ago from a producer asking me if I wanted to be a, a car expert on a history channel, show the history of hot rods and muscle cars. Uh, so who, I obviously need a haircut and a shave. That's so horrible. But uh, I got, it was uh, shortly after. So how this all worked out, we shot this in February. So it was after the LA auto show. And uh, I got my 55 Chevy into the, uh, the garage sponsored by Prestone down at the LA auto show. And uh, during that time, there was a bunch of uh, cars. They held a, a, a gala at the Peterson Automotive Museum. So, and uh, at this event, uh, we after this, we had a police escort from the Peterson Automotive Museum all the way over to the LA Convention Center. They shut the police. It was un. It was the only time that's ever happened to me. Um, so it was super cool. And part of the convoy was uh, there's a yellow Pantera that Elvis bought for his girlfriend back in the day. And that's the Pantera that Elvis got mad at and shot. He got an argument with the girlfriend, went down, the car wouldn't start. So he got out his, his, his gun and shot it a couple times. So that's Elvis's <laughs> Pantera. And I ended up talking to the curator of it, uh, who, who was driving it. And he's one of the curators at the Peterson. And uh, during, before this, the, the History Channel shoot, I went in with Dana. And if you've, have you ever been to the Peterson? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you done the vault tour? Uh, No, I haven't gone down in the vault. Oh, you got to go down in the vault. And no cameras are allowed, so no photography. So the first time I went down in the vault, there's a a Skagletti Corvette. And Skagletti built three of these Corvettes, one for Shelby and one for two other guys. But those are the only ones in existence. And I went down and there was a Skagletti Corvette down there. I flipped my lid during my first tour. And then when I met Dana at the LA Auto Show during this thing, um, he told me next time you come to the Peterson kid, come on in and I'll let you take pictures of it. So I got pictures of the Skagletti Corvette and got to eyeball the whole damn thing and touch it. And it was super bitching cool. And that was right before the history channel thing, which was this, Oh, this is so fun. All these pictures. That's not, yeah, so I, I was on the history channel, the history of, uh, hot rods so, and muscle cars a couple years ago. When and, you were on the show, what, uh, what kind of, um, uh, I guess anecdotes did they ask you to give and, and like, like here in this photo, it looks like you're giving uh, some type of information or, or yeah, something. It was just, it's a, it's a clip show. So they went through the, the history of hot rods and muscle cars and they show a lot of clips and then they have uh, people like me. And I know Alana Shore, I was on there from hot rod magazine. Uh, and I know Jesse, Jesse Combs, she was on the show. So just asking us questions. I remember one of the things was about how do muscle cars come to be, uh, the judge is like, remember the GTO, the judge, here come to judge. So it yeah. all advertising and marketing and, um, and what is a muscle car? So just that sort of things. And then they would get sound bites from us. So it's just the uh, art of giving a good sound bite. So uh, that was, awesome. yeah, that was good fun. Yeah, definitely. You ready for that last photo, Greg? The last photo. Boom. Oh, and, a, and a good segue. Look at you. Yeah. Guys. Very nice. That was, uh, yeah, the start of, so that's my 55 Chevy. It's a 210. It's not a Nomad. And I built it to drive. So drive the stink out of that thing. It's been, I I don't know if I've put 70,000 miles on it since I got it, not 10 years ago. But when I got it, it had a, a, an O&O small block. So it's got 10% more nickel in the, in the O&O. Uh, it's got aluminum. I put aluminum heads on it. And I put a, a Holley Sniper uh, throttle body fuel injection system on it. Uh, drove it from the top of Pike's Peak to the bottom of Badwater, 
Uh, it's been to the corkscrew on Laguna Seca to the Texas Motor Speedway, I think 19 national parks in 10 states so far. And then I decided to, uh, I, uh, anyways, what do I do? And before I could get the answer out, he's, you know, uh, you're Vinny Costa, but you know, Lucky Costa from uh, Hot Rod Garage or Mobile Tech Lucky? Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Anyway, he's got this, anyways, I had Lucky, it's like, what do I do? LS it. Wait, what? <laughs> LS it before I could even get it out. He told me to LS it. Oh, okay. So I started doing some research and that's, it's a 2003, um, six liter LQ four that I took to CPR engines. And it's now a 408 cubic inch forged internal, uh, LQ four, I guess uh, the, the cathedral port heads are gone. It's got uh, rectangle port heads on it. And, um, yeah, it took a few months, and oh, geez, these LS is getting it in. It's got the Holly multi-port fuel injection on it, uh, and yeah, I, I was struggling and, and panicking to get it ready for uh, March 16th. I was planning on leaving, going the, starting at the Santa Monica Pier, Old Route 66, the end of Old Route 66. I was going to take the exact route all the way past the Wigwam, Pasadena, uh, Foothill Parkway up to Azusa, all the way out to to, to Flagstaff, and then I was going to go down to Pleasant or to a uh, Scottsdale for the good guys, and then up to Pleasanton for the good guys, and then down bar for the good guys. But all the good guys are canceled, so I got the car ready. The car's tuned up. I got the the, the nitrous in it, and uh, um, it's ready to go. It's uh, um, but now we're under quarantine, and uh, and there it sits. Yeah, and there there it is. So it's well, that's the old so car. So, Jeff, um, I know that uh, before you started putting the LS together, you had already driven it all over, like you mentioned. And uh, that's kind of the idea behind uh, your website, right? I drive a 55. Yeah, 100%. I, I, uh, the Corvette I drove, and it wasn't convenient to take across country. I'm a wagon whore. So uh, during the Corvette, I found a 68 Impala wagon. And uh, I, I cool. uh, when I bought, I bought it in Venice Beach and it had a quarter inch of paint. It was painted with a brush. I'm not making this up. Painted with a brush and I ground it all off, but it was a rust bucket. I painted it flame blue with yellow flames on it and I dropped a 468 in it. It's a 600 horsepower big block with a, a turbo 400 behind it. It was a burnout machine. Ugly as sin. Um, and the reason I got rid of it was it wouldn't go off road and it was going to cost me more money than, than to, to, uh, to get rid of the rust. So uh, I forget where I was, um, but a friend of a friend or somebody somewhere had a 72 K5 Blazer. Four-wheel drive, little Blazer, already had a 45-gallon fuel cell in it, already had oh, okay. a cage in it, and the, the small block was dead. So I got the engine and transmission out of it, took the engine and transmission out of the Impala, put it... And, and it took me about a month because I finally figured out the trick with the blazers. You couldn't get a small block in. It was, or a big block into them. They didn't put a big block in a blazer. It was that far away from the transfer case, three quarters of an inch from the transfer case. We couldn't get it in. And then finally from somewhere, get a 72 big block Corvette valve cover and an eight pound sledgehammer. Bam, <laughs> bam, bam to the firewall. And it slid yeah. right in. So I had a 600 horsepower, uh, blazer and I put a 14 bolt rear end, a Dana, wait, 14 bolt rear end, Dana 60 front end, had the fuel cell in it, a 12 point cage, but it got like eight gallons to the mile. Um, <laughs> but it was, I took that thing out to Colorado to Moab, I drove it all over the place. That's and awesome, then, dude. Oh, I love that I thing. And then, and then one of the, the girlfriends, I ended up getting married and uh, I was driving back and forth from here to Orange County, 60 miles, and at the eight gallons per mile, it don't work. So I got rid of that. And uh, then I got rid of the girl, and uh, now I'm back to the hot rod with the 55. <laughs> Dude, that's wild. I didn't know you were an off-road guy. That's really cool. Yeah, it's good fun. And that's the one thing that – the one thing about the 55 is that it's not it's not four-wheel. And uh, did you see the uh, – there's a Buick. Is it Schwedy's Garage? There's a Buick, that a 55 or 57 Buick that's that's full-on. Yes. Yep, the Shreddy. red and white one? Yeah, so they oh, they took a they took a, a ZR2 um uh S10 like okay. maybe a 98 99 and they took the body off and so they just used the chassis and if you look at photos of that Pontiac um you can see uh like rails that they welded on underneath the doors um 
all across the bottom. So it's just it's literally just set atop an S10 ZR2 frame. So you have a, a four like um, a four by four uh, 57, 56 Pontiac. Yep. It's awesome. Love it that thing. It is awesome. Mike Musto and I did a piece on in the Hot Rod Power Tour last year, and it is. And I told uh, you know uh, I told my buddy Cotton. It's like yeah, I kind of want to jack up the 55 and, and it's like you can't do that if you're going to do something like that get another car the 55 is going to leave it alone it's like uh so yeah i'll find a well, door and jack it up make it nah, bad purists, man hey so uh, i'm glad that you brought that up so um when we first started started talking about cars and and you found out that i own snake eyes and i found out that you own the 55 um i accidentally uh called it um it was a uh, ignorance on my part but i called it a nomad and uh, you promptly corrected me. You says, I appreciate it. You know, I'm glad that you like it, but it's not a nomad. It's a handyman. Yeah. And I said, what's a handyman? Um, I'm a muscle car guy. I, I like older hot rods. I like tri fives, but I don't know as much about them. And so you kind of schooled me up a little bit. And um, and so I figured uh, since you're the tri five guy. Uh, I don't know about that because my co-host on the power tour, Clarence Barnes, I will give him full credit for this, and he will never let me live this down. We were on our way down to drifting at Long Beach, watching those things down at Long Beach on the way down there, and I had just either bought the car or was taking delivery or had just gotten the car. So I was just learning about it and getting just sinking my teeth into them. And he asked me the difference between the 150, the 210, and the Nomad. And I was like, I remember he was driving his Prius, and I was in the passenger seat, and I was like, I, you know, I, I don't know. What you don't know the difference, da, 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 da. and he gives me a hard time about it to this <laughs> day. Um, so it, you're right; it's it's not a nomad. Uh, and the big difference, at least between a two ten, so it's so funny. They're right here. I had Greg, uh, Greg, and I were talking before you came on. Okay, here's a nomad, and this is actually from Ber from Brandon from B Roll McCray. Power me yeah. his own Brandon McCray. This was a gift from him. He's he's. So nomads didn't, there was no sunroof. This is a hot wheel. So nomads have the <laughs> ribs on the roof, right? They have the slanted B pillar and then they've got their ribs on the tailgate. Okay. All right. And now the 210, <laughs> which mine is the roof is smooth. Okay. Very B, cool. B pillar is straight and no ribs on the tailgate. Interesting. And so those are both the same model year. Uh, well, yeah, both 55s. Yeah, okay. they both have the uh, 55 grill. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can see the uh, the rear ends. And the the Nomad has got a knuckle buster, they call it, handle, because it's tough to get your fingers in there. Whereas the uh, the 210 and the 150s, they've got a T handle where you just turn it and twist instead of pushing a button like the Nomad. Okay. So those um, are, but otherwise, the difference between them is basically trim. Okay. The bodies are all the same except for two and four door. And they, they called it the handyman because there weren't any SUVs. The Suburban was around. And, you know, the Suburban is one of the is longer. It's been around longer than the Jeep. Uh, but the Suburban, there, there weren't there weren't the Suburbans or there weren't the, what do you call them, the, uh, the SUVs. So, and there weren't really a lot of or the pickup trucks. So the handyman, if you had a handyman, they would use the station wagon <laughs> and put all their tools in the back of the hand, of the wagon. So that's why it's a two door because they weren't taking people back and forth. A two door handyman. That's awesome, dude. So, um, <laughs> you said that Brandon McRae gave you one of those Hot Wheels. He was on episode, what was it, Greg? Episode four, five. If you guys want to go back into Street Muscle Magazine's Facebook page, you guys can check out that episode with Brandon McRae. That was a really cool episode, and we played some fun games. Brandon's uh, awesome. Just, I remember like, I've known Brandon so long as when, when his dreadlocks were wee little baby locks, <laughs> they're little cauliflowers. Yeah, man. They're super long now, but, yeah. um, yeah, so we played a game with him, uh, just like a game that we're going to play with you now, Jeff. Um, if you're ready, Greg, will you hold off on showing these photos until after um, I've given the answer? So we got five questions for you, Jeff. Okay. Um, about try, it's called Try Five Trivia, and we got five Try Five questions that are going to be progressively more difficult. Um, so the first one's going to be a real softball. All right, okay, you ready? Good. Okay. <laughs> cool. All right, number one, uh, what year and model Tri-5 sports a hidden gas cap, and where is it located? 56 on the uh, driver driver's side rear. That's a softball. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So anybody who knows about Tri-5s will know that one. That's a point for Jeff. There you go. Bam. Those are, they're uh, super trick. And see, the thing is, is that a lot of people, or 
And you can do that to a 55 and they've got this kit where you, you push a button and zzz, it's electric and it goes out. It's super cool. But then you've got to weld up the door. And if you weld mm. up the door, then you got to paint the whole damn thing. So it's a, but those are, those are super bitching cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And and I'm surprised that it was only on 56 on the Bel Air. Like what? All right. It probably yeah. costs a lot to engineer. Um, okay. Next question. What is considered to be the rarest tri five? The rarest tri five. I, I would say a 57 black widow is my guess, but. Oh, okay. That's a specific, um, a specific. Yeah, that, those are race cars. Uh, super yeah. rare is my, okay. I have, why? What is I guess it? I should narrow, narrow the I question. Th I uh, think he just broke the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. what, what is, what is considered to be the rarest production tri five? Uh, if you had to guess. Fit, uh, 50, 55 Bel Air convertible. No, sir. It's a 1957, according to Google. Yeah, 57, <laughs> the 19, okay. 1957 Nomad is the rarest tri-fi. About 6,500 were sold. Okay. Interesting. I know those were, I think those were more expensive than the Corvette at the time. And from what I understand is what, I, what I've been told is that the, the handymans now are rarer than the, than the Nomads because every, everyone, and so don't feel bad because I, when I first started looking for a wagon, I used to think that all wagons are nomads. So I remember driving down Route 63. Everyone says, nice nomads. I, that's why I use the hashtag, not a nomad. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure that will be corrected in the comments. So if you're tuning in and you guys are watching our Tri5 Trivia and we get something wrong or uh, or Google was wrong, rather, then let us know in the comment section. Yeah, please. Um, question number three. Uh, what was the price of a base model Chevy 210? And what size engine did it did the base model come with? Fifty five. Um, base model Chevy two ten is is all the question says. I'm gonna say uh, base model twenty three hundred, and it came with uh, a straight six. Base engine was a it straight did, six. It did come with a, uh, a straight six. Um, a little high on the price tag. They came in at sixteen hundred, and I believe that was for the fifty five. Yeah. Okay, sixteen hundred. Wow. Oh, look at that. Imagine buying that thing for 1600 bucks. Oh, my God. Oh, just, I would just lower the front end, what, three inches? Oh, man. I would look at gas her it out. That thing's oh so God, cool. That's sick. Yeah. It's a gorgeous car. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're getting to uh, some, some more difficult ones. Here's no, question number four. Oh, gee. Uh, okay. Um, Tri fives were offered with some options that we would consider strange today one of which was listed as an electric shaver. The vehicle owner could choose from three different electric shavers, all came with 12 volt cigarette lighter plugins to be used in the car so you could conveniently shave during your drive down the road. What three brands were they? Oh, geez. Norelco, Ronco, <laughs> and Sparco. <laughs> <laughs> hey dude you got one of them that was pretty good i was expecting uh, uh i oh, didn't shit. i wouldn't have gotten any of them but yeah so uh so you got schick remington and norelco so you got norelco that's remington. awesome that's we'll so give them a half remington. point for that one greg <laughs> <laughs> nice i've seen some of them with uh, they've got tissue dispensers i know in uh i think in cadillac some of the cadillacs you get a record player oh wow that's yeah. awesome Right. That's like true decadence back then, right? Like, oh. hey, I'm on the go. I'm a businessman. I got to put on my suit. I got to shave on the way to the office. Yeah. That's awesome. That's but you awesome. mentioned the the record player. I mean, and you thought your Sony Discman skipped bad? Exactly. Can you imagine yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, some super heavyweight records might work, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. So the fifth and final question, Jeff. Um, there were seven different V8s available in 1957. One of the options was the legendary Super Turbo Fire V8. What makes it a unique and rare engine option among the rest? Uh, the, the, uh, it's got a hot camshaft in that thing. Get a little bit more performance. And is that the one with the two four barrels on it? Uh, that was an option on this engine. Um, right, so okay. to your point, um, what makes it uh, unique was it was available with continuous fuel injection. Um, and it oh, was fuel rare. Injected. Yeah among tri fives because most of them were were fitted with a uh, two or to your point a four barrel carburetor yeah that rochester uh what is it uh, mechanical fuel injection they're worth a so, bunch of money today but they ran like they didn't run very well back then so so far you have um 
uh, two points because we'll give you a half point for that one, a half point for the last one, and then the one point that you got in the beginning. So that's two points. But we have a bonus, a bonus round, Jeff. So you good, can good. still win. You can still win. Um, all right. So going back to question number four, where they had some weird options back in the day where you can get some some crazy stuff. Um, what do you know about the ashtray options for uh, tri five specifically uh, from like fifty five to sixty actually? But but a lot of them were in the tri five. Ashtray ash options. Mm -hmm. Actually, it I can only. Th I know it's right there on the dashboard. Little clip out ashtray, but I don't know if there's options anything in the back. No, uh, anything that made that ashtray up front unique. Any weird option that could have been ordered. The look says he's stumped. I am stumped completely. Oh man. Tell okay, me. so um, cool. it's a super, it's a super rare option, but you could have gotten a vacuum ashtray. Oh, okay. Would, okay. Yeah, that it sucks out. It sucks the ashes. I remember. Yep, sucks the ashes. That. Puts it in a canister that you can empty like a trash can. But uh, super rare option. Yeah, you got uh, me. <laughs> man, I stumped Jeff. That's awesome. That's awesome, dude. Thank you so much for playing the game. Oh, well, thanks. The, Thank you. The thing is, just like Drew Carey's other show, the points don't matter. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. Thanks, they don't Greg. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, that's so cool, man. I know you. You know so much about cars in general that every time I go out to uh, one of the autocross events at Good Guys, I'm like snapping photos of cars that are going around the track. Uh, but I'm also listening to you on the speakers. And I'm like, really? I didn't know that. And you always oh. come out with some interesting factoids. So um, you, uh, you're you continually you. educating me, man. I appreciate it. Oh, thank um, you. Hey, so Jeff, before we get going and uh, we let you get back to uh, working on your Tri-5, um, what uh, what do you have in the works? What are you currently uh, looking forward to? What can people look uh, be on the lookout for? Um, can you uh, tell us more about your website? And uh, yeah, what's going on with Jeff Distant? You know, funny, funny. I'm looking forward to. Yeah, a, a friend of mine has been yelling at me for a long time to do more with my YouTube, and I haven't. So, been trying to get that up and running. And and my goal was when I I was leaving on March the 16th to do the Route 66, and I was going to do the whole pictures and do some videos and da, da 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 and get some content for YouTube and do the whole try old car going down the road. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward to right now. Looking forward to this quarantine being over with um, the cars ready to rock. I'm ready to rock. Uh, yeah. So I'm hoping the, the power tour happens. The, the first show that, that I'm planning for right now is I'm hoping that the, the, the LS fest West, still happens uh if that because uh, i got an ls now and they'll let me in and uh, so, so I'm, I'm planning to go out to there and I'm, from there i'm going to go out to colorado for my pop's 80th birthday and uh from there i'm planning to drive it to uh, salt lake city for the the first good guys salt lake city show um and uh i've actually already planned my route i'm uh, from colorado i'll be going through uh, what rocky mountain national park i'll head down to to Canyonlands national park arches national park and there, uh, there's a couple of scenic drives up to uh, Salt Lake City, and I want to stop by and see uh, Randy, we Randy and Sydney Weaver at the Weaver's Customs out there in Salt Lake City. There's some friends from the Power Tour, and then do the, the whole good guys thing. And I'm, I'm hoping that happens. So that's my uh, uh, my first that, goal. That's awesome. Um, I I I sincerely uh, believe that you'll get to do all that and more, Jeff. Um, nice. I'm curious though. Do you know anything about um, the Good Guys Virtual Car Show? Have you heard anything uh, about that? I have heard about it. All I know is this Good Guys Virtual Car Show. Uh, it's happening tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I think it starts at 7. I already hashtagged. I, I, I had to scroll through a, um, uh, some of my photos because at the Good Guys Pleasanton event last year and at Scottsdale, I happened to get there at a certain time and I parked the car right under the big uh, autocross banner for Good Guys, get the low shot of it and everything. So I just tagged it in that. So maybe I'll make the... Uh, uh, the good guys virtual car show, but that should be super fun. I'm planning on, on watching and checking it out. I'm, and I'm glad they're doing something. Cause uh, it, it's like, I have the, uh, this, this is a silly little antidote back when I did auto show in Detroit, the people would hate me for this reason is that where, where do we live Vinny? California. No, what, but come on specifically, where do we live? Southern, Southern California. Yeah. So Cal man in Southern California is the what it's the car capital of the world and what if people in detroit hates oh, it's not the car capital of the world motor city well you may be motor city but where's your hot rod in january oh, it's in the garage. <laughs> and why because your weather sucks in southern california is the only place on the planet you can drive your hot rod 
open wheel, open fender hot rod, 360 days a year. We get five days of rain. That's why we can do that. So we are the car capital of the world. And it's like, we, we're used to it. We can have the cars out all the time, but the rest of the, the rest of the United States, they're ready to, we got, they, they, they've got their projects ready to roll. So uh, I, I can't That's wait right, to, to be yeah, a hashtag, go drive it. Exactly. Go drive it. Shout out Dave Cass. What's up? Um, hey, <laughs> yeah. so Jeff, uh, before we let you go, um, I drive a 55.com uh, for all of our uh, listeners and viewers who want to uh, take a look back at some of those trips that Jeff was talking about earlier when he went to um, uh, all those national parks and all these amazing places. Um, I drive a 55.com. Also, check out streetmusclemag.com and enginelabs.com, powerautomedia.com. And of course, if you're already watching, you're watching on Facebook, check out Street Muscle Magazine and Engine Labs Facebook. So for your Street Muscle Magazine, what's what do you got coming up in that? Oh, man, we got a lot of stuff cooking. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we've had a, 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 a virtual wrench thrown in uh, into our works, but um, we're still working at full capacity, man. We got a lot of stuff going on, including uh, the project that's sitting right behind me. It's my 68 Firebird uh, LS Power. Um, we also got stuff coming up on Snake Eyes. Um, if you want to check out our last installment where we uh, covered the install of the Torque Storm blower, you can check that out on streetmusclemag.com. Um, and uh, we also have updates coming on uh, Project Payback. That's a and, 68 GTO. And where where's Snake Eyes right now? Snake Eyes, yeah. Snake Eyes is at CPP Classic, Classic Performance, Performance Products. Classic Performance Products, exactly. Yeah. And, and what's happening to it? What what is Jim uh, and, and Nick and what are they what are they doing to it? Yeah, I, I can't uh, divulge too much information. Just between but you and me, nobody else is listening. Yeah, Just between uh, you and me, buddy. We're doing a little bit of an overhaul to the suspension and brakes, and um, and. And that's all I'm gonna. Type, a little pro. Yeah, that's all I can say right now. Yeah, so Dude, guys, uh, be on the lookout. You guys are gonna have to stay tuned for some cool stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I appreciate that, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, check us out next week, noon Pacific time. Um, we're gonna be here, Street Muscle Mag and Engine Labs. And thank you so much for coming on the show, Jeff. It's been a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me, Vinny, Greg. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you soon. All right, buddy.